All right, so here's a Philco. This is a model 40 180, and I'm sure it was made uh, during the 39 year in 1939 for the 40 model year, is what I'm trying to say. Looks like a seven tube set. Um, so uh, let's see what we got here. We got a 1232 for the RF stage, a 7J7 for the detector and oscillator, 7B7 for IF, looks like a first IF, then a uh, 7A6 for the second detector and ABC circuit, first audio tube is a 7C6. And uh, we got two push pull 41 uh, uh, audio output tubes. So it's got a push pull circuit. So I would say this is at least a, a mid grade set for the year. So uh, not bad. It's in all original condition. It's, uh, it's got its original finish and um, all the original knobs and push buttons. Um, everything is in real nice shape. This was sent in for repair. Um, and so uh, we're going to gonna look at it. The complaint is, is uh, it lights up and uh, is pretty much dead. There's nothing going on. So let's plug it in and verify that. All right, so we got the set turned on and tubes have warmed up. I'm not hearing anything. Like we got um, vacuum bulb illumination. Same. I feel warm. I'm just doing a little wiggle test. See if I could get anything. But I'm not hearing anything, so I got some kind of a antenna switch on here I'm not hearing anything from the speaker so yeah what I normally do with these things especially anything with Loctal tubes I like to give the tubes a wiggle test because they Loctal tubes usually have a uh, connection issues and you know, a lot of times it'll be just a loose connection in the tubes so anyway let's uh Let's uh, let's pull the chassis, and I guess I'm about to pull the speaker too, because you know it's one of those electrodynamic speakers. So we're going to need you know that plugged in to test it. Another thing I like to do is play around with these push buttons, because I've had that had that issue before, and uh, but that don't seem to be the case here. So run it down the shortwave man see if we can get anything I'm not sure which one of these is for the tuner it doesn't say so anyway I'm not getting anything so Alright, so we got the uh, the chassis and the speaker out. So, um, anyway, uh, here's all of our tubes. We got a 7G7 here, and what is that? A 6J8. This is a mix of Loctal and Octal tubes. So, we got a 41. So, we got our two 41s here. Our 6Z4 rectifier and oh lord what is this a 6b7 6b6 or 7b6 i think or 7c6 excuse me so anyway uh really uh you know um for a, you know a chassis this size it's really quite simple looking I mean, there's really not a whole lot to it and i was looking under here earlier and there's not a whole lot under here either not too much going on for a uh, you know full-size um, console 
the push button mechanisms and they're you know these tuner slugs which is what you use to set each preset is <laughs> it takes up the most space in here but you know besides uh, this uh, old replacement filter cap here it pretty much looks mostly original so hopefully uh, you know no monkey business so uh, you know hopefully this will be pretty straightforward okay I've got the set powered on and uh, I'm getting a very low level hum uh, it makes no difference if you turn up the volume uh, if it'll camera will pick it up or not Uh, that's holding it right up in the speaker cone. I don't know if that picked it up or not, but that's about all I'm getting. And what I like to do is try to um, narrow the the issue down to a particular stage of the radio. So, you know, basically, this is the audio section. This is your 241 audio output tubes and you know over here's your rectifier but which is a power supply section so um what i want to do is find out if we're getting any sound from the audio uh, circuit first because that's what's going to amplify what's in the radio so let's let's touch the volume control nothing and the uh, the grid of the tube here get a little pop but nothing really yeah I don't think anybody's home in the audio section it seems like to me so first thing I want to do is check this coupling capacitor here so one thing I like to do is to figure out if the oscillator is running and you got the radio tipped up on the side and got a little AM radio here and we can flip the band switch so we know the oscillator is running. Okay, so one thing I was noticing doing a visual inspection down here is this resistor here. If you can see how hot and cracked that is. So I was feeling of it and it was really hot. You could barely even touch that thing. I think that kind of told me that maybe this capacitor was shorted. So let's uh, let's do a resistance check and see. Uh, I, I have a feeling this is our problem. This goes to ground, so it will be just grounding this out. Okay, I'm running my leads right across the resistor. Or, uh, I'm sorry, the capacitor, not that resistor. But just doing an ohms check across the capacitor, you shouldn't get anything when you touch it. And uh, I think the, uh, I think we got a uh, a grounding resistor here instead of a uh, a uh, bypass capacitor we got a grounding resistor here 1.5 ohms <laughs> yeah that one's shorted let's cut that out of the circuit and see if the radio plays all right so I got it cut out of the circuit there let's uh let's probe it I don't know if you can see that meter or not but probe it with it um, out of the circuit I'm still getting 1.7 ohms I don't know if you can see that or not 
This is what I'm doing here. This is where it grounds, right here. Try to keep the camera straight, sorry. So this is where it grounds here with my positive lead at, or the red lead. And that is there, and I'm getting 1.7 ohms. So that, that capacitor is shorted. This radio honestly needs all the capacitors changed. I mean, this these things are, you know, I, I could fix it and put a new capacitor in there. Uh, call him up, say, come get your set, it's fixed. And, uh, you know, he could take it home, it could last two months, and he'd be right back over here again. Um, these capacitors are far less superior than stuff is now. I mean, things have advanced quite a bit, so... Anyway, uh, I'm going to replace this capacitor and see what happens, you know, see what we get. I, I'm going to plug it in and uh, see, hang on, I'm going to plug it in and just see what happens here. I'm getting a little off sidetracked. There it is. Distorted sounding, but. It plays. I can't say it sounds good, but hey, at least we got the uh, the radio working. I kept thinking it was something in the audio circuit, but then I was getting popping and um, in the audio circuit. But then I kept going through it with the signal tracer, and I wasn't getting anything in the front end. And I was like, that something ain't right with that because you should be getting, you know some kind of a signal if the front end's working you should be getting some kind of a signal in the front end on the signal tracer and i wasn't getting anything and the oscillator was running but it wasn't making it out of the tube the oscillator was running but this is the output of that tube um, so that's coming off the plate of that tube so yeah that uh that little bypass capacitor was shorted Okay. okay Bill. Got the uh, capacitor hey, replaced. A picture of my store. Why, that's my ad. It's a nice paper. And um, I went ahead and also replaced this 1K resistor. That was it right there. So anyway, the radio is running, and I can touch that resistor, and it's not even warm. This one was boiling hot when that capacitor was shorted, so that told me there was some kind of a short somewhere, and it looks like this had been doing this for a while. <clears throat> Excuse me, this, this guy had told me that um, he hadn't played this radio in several years, and when he uh, plugged it back in to listen to it, it, it didn't work, and he couldn't figure out why. So this is this has been something that you know is. I mean, by this resistor, this tells me this has been going on for a while. That resistor, or I'm um, excuse me. Well, this resistor has been getting hot for a while. Is what I'm trying to say. But that capacitor <clears throat> has been shorted for a while, or shorting, you know, and uh, probably became leaky, and you know, leaky to ground, and then it just became more and more leaky to the point where it was basically shorted so anyway we got the set playing so that you know gives me a a good uh you know uh, uh now i can actually test the thing and and uh all that it's working uh it doesn't sound all that great uh, but i'm gonna have to to uh get a hold of the um the owner of the set and find out if he wants to go through it and replace all these old capacitors I yeah I would suggest that because I mean you know these things are old and you know 
can replace this one but then there's just another one's going to short and eventually or you know they're probably all leaky anyway and you know if he replaces them it's going to sound and work a whole lot better and you know at the same time i can go through and check all the resistors and replace anything that's out of tolerance and it, the radio will really work a whole lot better if he does that so i would replace these filters too it's still got the original still got this original filter uh in line with it i mean i would <laughs> I would replace that and I would replace this <clears throat> although these here are actually pretty good I think it's a dry electrolytic those usually work pretty good but you know I still replace it, it the thing is probably 70 years old you know or 60 70 years old there's no telling you know so anyway um, I'm gonna get a hold of the uh, the owner and find out what he wants to do all right, so it's a few days later, and I thought <clears throat> thought we'd get back on this uh, Philco. The uh, the owner has uh, given the green light to uh, to continue and um, replacing uh, troublesome components, uh, uh, all the uh, paper wax capacitors and uh, any out of tolerance resistors. Um, I already tested the tubes and found. Um, I believe it was three weak tubes the rectifier the 7b7 and this uh i think it's a 6j8 oscillator was was weak so i i had a 7b7 and a 6z4 rectifier um but i did not have the 6j8 i had to order that one i ordered it new old stock and there's a few capacitors that i that, that this set has that I didn't have on hand uh, 0 0.003 and uh, a couple of 0.2's um, so those are ordered and uh, they're on the way um, so uh, yeah I thought I'd go ahead and get uh, go ahead and get started on this thing and replace while those components are on the way replace uh, uh, anything else that uh, just kind of go ahead and get a head start and, and replace what I've already got on hand uh, component wise okay so the first thing I want to get started on I, I want to get started here in the uh, power supply and the uh, audio output section of the radio this is the most failure prone section of a radio is uh, usually the caps and resistors in this section um, so I'm going to change the filters on this thing first. Um, the original one that's in here is a 12 microfarad, uh, 350 volt ca cap. Uh, I don't have a 12 microfarad, and the site that I went to that I normally get parts from doesn't have them either. I know I could probably get on DigiKey or uh, you know some place like that and um, and get them, but. Uh, I've, I've already got some two 16s and I'm just going to go ahead and use two 16s on this. It's not that far off and it's, you know, it's, they're just filters so it, it shouldn't shouldn't be an issue. And the caps that I have are I think a 475 volt and this one's a 350. The one they've got in here is a 450. Um, the original 16 that was here, right behind where that tape is right there that I'm going to get rid of. Um, I have no idea. I'll have to look on the schematic to see the voltage on that one, but it's gone. They took it out of the set. So anyway, I'm going to get those replaced and uh, and start working in this section. And then I'm going to replace this uh, across the line cap here with some safety caps. And I'm thinking about putting a fuse in line with this transformer. So if something goes wrong, it won't burn that transformer out. So this is the capacitor they had in here as a replacement. Syngamo, never heard of it. Anyway, this is the mess that they had taped up here. I'm gonna try to relocate that. Looks like somebody ran a wire over here. I don't know if that's original or not, but I'm thinking about just relocating all this stuff to there. And, um, either that or using a terminal strip or something like that <clears throat> and um, then just put the capacitor in there because 
all this stuff wrapped around this these little wires and these coils for this these presets mm, I don't I just don't like I just don't want to put a, a cap in here and they had it moved over here so I'll probably just relocate it over there okay I've got this on a terminal strip with a bunch of all the wires that were taped together are now on a terminal strip it's safer that way and I had to extend this red wire which comes down from down here on this terminal strip it only stopped about right in here so I had to cut that wire and you know take it off and put a new wire in and uh, extend it up a little bit and they got all the wires to go it's not the prettiest thing but it, it holds it's good and sturdy it won't move so that should be good so now we're working on this other one here I cut this one cut this out of the circuit here and I noticed that this can is insulated from the um, from the chassis so that does not ground to the chassis uh, your ground is going through this resistor circuit here and these wires so what I think I'm gonna do is just get rid of this jumper wire here and solder this to here and then solder the capacitor leg here and then just tack it in down here like the factory's got it and uh, do it that way okay so we have our two new filters installed and they seem to be working just fine so um these resistors here i tend to like to check those because if you know power resistors and they're fine so uh, uh, I think we're going to move on to uh, this Bakelite block here um, I'm not going to show that I've got videos on how to rebuild Bakelite block capacitors so um, uh, check those out on my channel and uh, anyway so what I'm going to do with this one is I'm going to put some safety caps in here um, I tend to be a little more strict on safety caps in this location on transformer radios because of the, the risk of uh, losing the transformer, the uh, primary windings in the transformer. So uh, I'm going to go with some safety caps here. Uh, those are uh, 0 0.01 microfarad caps. There's two of them, uh, one here and one here. And they ground to here so uh, you could actually do it on top of here if you remove the old capacitor out of the circuit uh, but uh, I like to put them inside to hide them so I'm gonna take this loose gut the uh, the uh, the tar and the wax and the capacitor or not wax but the tar and the, the two capacitors I'm gonna take them out and put some safety caps in there and just in case of those y'all wonder what safety caps look like, here's a bag of them here. Okay, so I got that, that Bakelite block uh, restuffed or rebuilt. So uh, I need to kind of move down in here in this section. We've got a, a few capacitors down here uh, that were blocked by these, um, these uh, the, the, the tuning preset slugs and variable capacitors so I wanted to get those out of the way so I've kind of swung those up out of the way so I can get access into here because there's a, a few coupling caps I need to get changed in here um, this one I don't have it's a point zero zero three so we're gonna I already ordered that one it's on the way um, so anyway um, I'm going to get some of these .01s changed. I've got those uh, in stock, so we'll go ahead and get those uh, those changed out. And I'll go through and check these resistors as I go along. All right, so we got our uh, all of our capacitors and resistors replaced. This up under these, so I'm going to put all this back. Um, I had to replace a. Uh, uh, 33k ohm let's see that one ohm I replaced in the beginning these caps here 
and uh, this uh, there's a one meg I had to replace somewhere. Uh, that's back up here. Anyway, so not too many. Uh, all these red great. So I'm just gonna leave them right where they're at. All right. Um, we got a pretty good bit replaced here. Uh, it's the next day, and I went to the mailbox and. We have our replacement parts that came in. Um, I ordered that 6J8 tube, and uh, I think I'm going to be sending that back because it's weaker than the one that's in here. And I don't understand how a you know electronic supplier can sell a new old stock tube that's weaker than the one that's in the radio. But uh, and it, I might see if it was used, but that thing is it was it's supposed to be new old stock. And it came in a white paper box, so it seems more like it's used to me than seems like it's worn out to me more than it is new old stock. So I'm gonna contact them and see what they say about that. According to the military tube tester, it's lower than the one that's in here, so I'll keep the one that's in here before I uh, put that in there. So anyway, um, we got our caps, and I'm gonna finish changing the ones that need to be changed that I didn't have this uh, point double oh three and then this uh, point two down here and I believe there's another point two somewhere I'm not sure I uh, ordered two of them parts list said there was two but this radio uh, the schematic that I have is different because if I can show you this, this schematic list the um, the IF is a wait a minute the detector and oscillator is a 7J7 and the one that's in here is a 6J8 it's, so they must have made some changes to this radio in the schematic since this schematic or this is an earlier model not real sure but um, anyway, it doesn't specify anything about a 6J8, and I cross that tube number, the 7J7, and it's, it's a different tube than the 6J8. It doesn't, doesn't list that as a, you know, like a substitute or anything, so, anyway, they must have changed the design of that circuit or whatever, so, who knows, it's, the schematic is for like, looks like about, like five different model radios so you know, who knows it could be a variation or something but generally it looks like the cert, you know the, the stuff in here I'm looking at is correct so anyway all right on to the uh, I'm gonna go ahead and finish this thing up all right so I got it all back together and in the cabinet I didn't film it but I did put a uh, a fuse in line with the transformer so if something shorts it'll protect the transformer um, I usually use like a one amp fuse because the radio usually only pulls like about a half an amp so uh, so that's what I did so uh, anyway uh, yeah it's, it's working and it's playing good and um, I've uh, contacted the owner and uh, he's excited to uh, to pick it up so anyway uh, We'll, uh, we'll give you a quick band scan. I'll start out on shortwave. I uh, got it on shortwave and was uh, tuning around on it earlier. Quite a bit of stuff coming in. Got the DX coming in at night, so let's be able to pick up some stuff. <laughs> Now today we're on the top here dial America here, shortly. Six through eighteen. Shit. 
back at the very bottom of the page, you can arrange. they call the police band which is 1.5 which is actually in the AM broadcast band now up to 3.5 So there you go, a 1940 model Philco 40 180. Um, let's got it playing again, and uh, the owner is excited to come pick it up. So appreciate y'all watching, and catch y'all on the next one. All secure, ready to go back home.